the show itself was super cool. Meeting Muhammad Ali on top of it, wrestling in front of that dude. I mean, I remember after my first match, he told me, he says, oh, you, you're really good, you're very good. I just think, I mean, this is Muhammad Ali, brother. So being a part of that was, was absolutely awesome. And it's two coach Scorpio up and over, but again- Two nights in a row, 189,000 people. I've, I've never seen that many people together, ever. It's the only thing that I can ever brag about to Hogan that I've done, something that he has not done, is I wrestled for 199,000 people two nights in a row, not one. And that's all I got on him. <laughs> I've been a part of WrestleMania, and I've been to Super Bowls. I've, you know, I've, I've been to a lot of different big events. They pale in comparison to what I saw in Pyongyang. I knew that Vince McMahon was probably livid that there was a wrestling event that drew a bigger house than WrestleMania. But my joy is mitigated by the fact that none of them were paying customers, and they were kind of forced to be there. Technically, if you go to Wikipedia, folks, largest wrestling event in the world. Yep, I did that. After surviving days of grueling conditions and life-threatening situations, the wrestlers head to the massive May Day Stadium where festivities are about to commence. And I'm riding with Rick, and we're driving down the road, and two lanes were nothing but people walking to the show. And I says, Rick, man, we're really drawing a crowd here. I mean, these people really want to see this. And all of a sudden, the driver goes, no. He says, they don't want to come. He says, if they don't show up, they got a bullet in the head forced attendance. And I'm just going, you got to be kidding me. We got there our first night, 170,000 people there. And I thought, oh my God, Antonio Inoki is a genius. This is amazing. We're leaving WrestleMania in the dirt. <laughs> The way that you had over a hundred and some thousand people working and moving together and flashing all at the same time, it was mind blowing. You didn't even have to be high to trip off that. I mean, it was straight up mind blowing. Their show made the halftime of the Super Bowl look like a high school gig. I'm not kidding you, it was just un. Unbelievable. Before the matches started, we were all jacked, and we thought this would be awesome. And then the matches start, and I realized that none of these people have a clue what they're watching, why they're watching it. It makes no sense to them. First match went out there. It was quieter than it is in this room right now doing this interview. And that's hard to do. Talk during his match, stood on the second rope and yelled, and he says, what in the F are you even doing here, you rotten? And he cussed the crowd out. <laughs> this is a society where this kind of extravagant display of people throwing themselves around, especially, for example, the, the, the female wrestlers, must have been utterly alien to the North Koreans. I wrestled Hashimo the first night in a main event. North Koreans just stood there and watched us. We never got a reaction to anything. Just the stuff doesn't happen in this business. And you're just busting your tail trying to get these people to respond to you and nothing, absolutely nothing. The challenge to engage the crowd would now fall on the shoulders of promoter Antonio Inoki, whose connection to the people of North Korea was even deeper than it seemed. He got kind of the hometown treatment. Ric Flair, they didn't know what to make of Ric Flair. Bleach, blonde hair, sequence robe. They didn't understand it. Again, this match starts and it's quiet. And I'm going, God, man. Amazing to me that this is the first ever matchup between these two wrestling legends. They went to a different place. They kind of went old school. One to the chest, one to the forehead. And they kept working. All of a sudden, you could, you could hear the people start coming with Anoki. We hear the crowd for one of the few times at Collision in Korea really responding to Anoki. And about halfway through that match, that place is going absolutely crazy. 
crazy. Now coming off the rope sets up, Burnley plants his feet and takes an H.O. Boy Ric Flair off his feet. This is a testament to Rick, because Rick's job was to get Anoki over. Rick's job was to showcase Anoki. There's nobody better at that. Flair in a lot of trouble. Anoki tosses Flair. And I remember the, the finish of the match. Josh Brown kick. And Anoki went over, and the place just came unglued. These people were entertained for probably the first time in their lives. I mean, because there was no happiness in this place, man. This was like going to hell and living. They had a little fun that night, you know? And I guess that, that forced attendance, they are glad they are forced there, you know, for that one anyways. That was the, the greatest match that's ever happened in this business, ever. <laughs>